your wizard, Harry. And thanks to the folks over at Funko, today's video we're going to be having a look at the Funko Harry Potter vinyls of Hagrid and Harry Potter. I reach, I grab the Ultra Mesotron to first figure out how tall these figures stand. We're going to take it right to the top of Hagrid's head and stop it right there. The Ultra Mesotron tells us that Hagrid stands at 4.8 inches in height or in centimeters. You would be looking at 12.2 centimeters. Let's switch that back over to inches. We'll go ahead and measure off. Harry. Now you know he would be a little bit smaller than Hagrid. That would be correct. The Ultra Measuretron says yes, that is correct. Reviewer who is currently holding him. The uh, Harry Potter stands 4.1 inches. A little bit sh shorter. Well, you, you can clearly see that. 4.1 inches in height or in centimeters you'd be looking at 10.6. Those seeking clear display stands will find not one but two display stands included with the figures. Now, the figures, if I go ahead and take off the clear stands, the figures, in theory, do stand on their own. It's not so much an issue where you have to worry about them falling over. One thing you do have to worry about, though, is that the, the display stands are clearly different from one another. Harry's is much smaller, and even on top of that, his one peg right here is a little bit bigger. Then this one right here, you can see, a little bit smaller. This one's a little baby peg. It hasn't grown up yet and experienced the hardships of the world. This one, a slight more of a grown-up. Still not as big as this one right here. You never want to talk to that peg. Boy, the stories he would tell you. But they are clearly specific to these characters. Switch them all you want, but it's not going to work. It's just not going to work on the figures. Like I said, they don't really technically need stands, but... These ones, they always do come included with them, and it keeps them somewhat consistent with one another as well. Okay, so we've already established for the fact that the uh, the two vinyls are very different in height, as they should be. Hagrid is, is a lot taller of a character than little tiny Harry Potter. They're neat looking vinyls, and let me also say that these are slightly more older vinyls as well. Yeah, got a little behind. I didn't get a chance to have a look at these earlier, right? Really, really sorry. I, you know, I just got caught up with the hustle and the bustle of life and success climbing the corporate ladder. I didn't really notice as I was climbing the runners the of success. I didn't look down at any given point to realize, you know, climbing up as high as you can, it means you can fall so much, so much farther, you know, so, yeah, I also forgot, I forgot all about them as well, <laughs> I forgot all about them, let's have a look at Hagrid, they were actually on a shelf somewhere, and I reminded myself later, oh right, I forgot to have a look at those, Hagrid here is wearing his long jacket, his long trench coat, these ones are kind of a little less interesting because their arms are sort of just draping off to the side. It's almost as if Hagrid's arms fell asleep and he just can't move them. You ever just lay on your arm, lay on one arm, you know, because you lay on your side, you lay on your one arm and just, it's just that you don't realize how heavy your arm is until it falls asleep. Hagrid's got the problems of having both arms fallen asleep. He's got a good looking head sculpt. Kind of also looks like the ghost. Oh, there goes Harry Potter. Ah, go ahead, take a nap. You deserved it. You earned it, buddy. Uh, his head sculpt kind of looks like the ghost of Christmas present, as we are currently in the month of December. <laughs> if I post it in December. Nice, long, curly hair on Hagrid in the brown treatment, also in his beard. He's got some nice little rosy cheeks happening there as well. Underneath that is a vest, a a belt and a red tie, or red red shirt, I should say. Nice shiny boots. His posability is very limited. 
only due to the fact of the way his head sculpt is sculpted. You can see, hello in there. Hello. Is there life up there? There isn't. Okay. You can see that it does go fairly high up there, but the clearance, it's more so the beard that stops the movement of the head beyond these points. Once they hit those lazy shoulders, buddy, that head not going anywhere. So that's as much as you can really get out of him. Like I said, he doesn't have any problems standing, really. I mean, he stands a lot easier, as clearly you could see with poor little Harry Potter that toppled right over. Lazy arms also on poor little Harry. Could they have not given him a wand? I guess the worry would be if the wand went that way, it would run the risk of breaking. It's something, of course, I have to think about. I'm not in the field of toy development, but certainly the mindset of reviewing these long enough, you can kind of start seeing, okay, well, that's possibly why they didn't do that. They could have easily also sculpted the wand behind him. I mean, they could have sculpted various different things in his hand, but ultimately they just kind of went with the yawn treatment of having the lazy arms. To their credit, though, I think they've done a pretty good job of giving him the little wizard's robe. You can see underneath that is even his sweater. Well, underneath his striped scarf, that is. He's wearing a pair of sunglasses, eyeglasses, not quite sunglasses. Can you make out the uh, little lightning bolt uh, scar? No, you can't. It's covered by his hair. Can you move the hair? <laughs> what are we, is this magic? No, it's not magic. But I do think that the head sculpt on Harry is really good. Like also for the fact that they give him glasses. One of the few of the vinyl figures that actually possess spectacles. His posability is much more afforded because he can actually rotate his head all the way around. That's the benefits of having no beard. I have partial beards most of the time, which I like to call organized neglect. And I can tell you, though, despite for the fact that Hagrid would tell you you can't move your head past your shoulders, I very freely move my head past the point of my shoulders. I may, uh, and, uh just because I'm getting old, but I can move my head not quite all the way around. That would kill both Harry Potter and it would kill me. So I wouldn't do that. But Harry's head does rotate back and forth and all the way around. Um, it's, as far as I know, the only set. All right, all right, fine. It's the only set that so far possesses a Harry Potter. There was also a set that we're going to be looking at as well that has Hermione and, and Ron. We're going to have a look at that one as well. Um, I think that is, though, the majority, that is the bulk of what we got so far for Harry Potter vinyls. Let me also just say this as I'm pegging this into his feet. The display stand is a little tricky to get into Hagrid's feet. But uh, neat looking sets. Certainly, certainly for fans of Harry Potter, you may want to pick these up. It may involve some time traveling, however, though, because my comic book store usually only stocks one or two of the vinyls. I generally pick up one of them, and then whoever picks it up, the other guy, the girl, guy, owl, small serpent, picks up the other one, and then I don't see them again. I don't have not yet seen these ones resurface. Funko's not really big about redistributing their older lines, but you could probably still find these online if you wish. Do pardon this humbled reviewer for beating a dead horse. I don't like saying that, but I say it anyways. I've said this already in previous instances, having a look at the Funko vinyls, that these remind me of the Rankin Bass animated features, specifically the, the Land of Oz or was it the Wizard of Oz, one of my all-time favorite shows growing up as a kid. So I sort of gravitate towards these. It doesn't seem to matter, despite unlike Funko Pops, where I have to be really interested in the line. Generally, vinyls, as it goes, I pick them up no matter what. So that might be explaining why you guys generally see more vinyl reviews on this channel than you do Funko Pops. Funko Pops, I really have to be in the mood and like that character a lot to worth picking him up or her up or the owl or serpent up. Vinyls I pick up just every time. I, in fact, actually, FYI, when I go to my local comic book store, I usually say, anytime you guys get Funko vinyls in, put them aside for me. I'll pick them up. And that's what I did, at least with this set several months ago. And we're finally having a look at them now. Like I said, for Harry Potter fans, you may want to add these ones to your collection. I think they got a little bit more personality, personally speaking, than the Funko Pop varieties. And the fact you get two of them also kind of gives you a little bit extra oomph versus just picking up one slightly less oomph 
Funko Pop. Either way, today we were having a look slightly late. Yes, I will admit that. We were having a look at the Funko Harry Potter. This was Hagrid and Harry Potter, the vinyls of Harry Potter and Hagrid. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other vinyl reviews from Funko, you can check it out. There's a playlist. It's there. It's waiting for you to feast your eyes on. Speaking of feasting your eyes, we're going to be feasting our eyes on other cool collectibles coming onto this channel. So if you haven't already had a chance, hit that little subscribe button and that little bell notification and whatever else YouTube currently will ask of you, the viewer. Do it today. More videos, guys, will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.